Well, today an exciting day for Lafayette women's soccer. Talking about the class of 2024 here today on the Lafayette Sports Network. I am Adam Dubrovsky, joined by head coach Mick, uh, Mick Statham. And coach, obviously three of the last four seasons, you make it into the Patriot League tournament. This recent class of seniors having such success with four new recruits coming in. Obviously an opportunity for a new class to bring in and continue that line of success. Yeah, that's the key is you know, anyone arriving, obviously we're talking about this class today, but any future players arriving, just uh, identifying with, you know, what the team's goals are, what the team's all about, the purpose of the team. And I think these these four will be, will be great additions to obviously what we're trying to continue. Each recruit with their own interesting twist, interesting story in terms of what they bring to the table. We're gonna start off first with a player who is familiar to some of the players on the team now. In fact, you have uh, two recent freshmen, Natalie Newman and Emily, or, and, uh, or Sarah Oswald, I should say, from the West Town School. They were co-captains with Emily Coe, who is a new recruit coming in, and those three, a lot of success together, winning a state championship. What does Emily Coe bring to the table for this team? Well, she's a, I think she's a great combination of steel and style. Um, she's quite robust in a play. Uh, she's a very good athlete. Uh, her style of play is uh, very competitive, but she's also very good with the ball. She's a good ball striker. She's good in the air. So she's kind of a, a modern day central midfield player that can do a little bit of everything. Uh, and she's highly intelligent with it. She's a good leader. Uh, she's got a good winning personality. So uh, I think she's got so many different ingredients that will serve her well when she gets here. Great job at the high school level, all state, southeast, and Pennsylvania, obviously at the club level with Penn Fusion from U9 to U18. But that dynamic of having two uh, former teammates at the high school level and now two teammates at the college level where they've already had that friendship and bond together. They expected, even from years ago, this chemistry to be a big factor. How is the ability of the freshmen and both Oswald and Newman to have success this year going to help Co and the upcoming season become an immediate success? Well, I don't think it'll, it, it never does anyone any harm. So when Emily gets here, she's gonna have familiar faces as soon as she arrives which i think is really helpful but i think you know the the players spend uh, the incoming players always spend time here with camps and of course on official visits and things like that so a lot of them feel reasonably comfortable when they get here but obviously emily's relationship with sarah and natalie uh, and lawrence too um are you know pretty significant so she should feel uh really at home pretty quickly uh, but I also think that you know it's about obviously this is a new team it's a new environment for them and they've got to obviously adapt also to the way we do things this isn't you know what they've known before it's something new they just have some familiar faces and friends to help them adapt to, to Lafayette Soccer and Lafayette College. Emily Coe from Glen Mills, Pennsylvania will look at another Keystone product in Lauren Cunningham, a product of Episcopal Academy, a state champion in 2018, also at Penn Fusion with Emily. What does she bring to the table to the back line and how might she be a big factor for the Leopards? Well, the thing about Lauren is she's another a good combination of, she's a heck of an athlete. She's really quick. Uh, she glides. Uh, over the turf, the way she runs, it looks effortless. Uh, but she's extremely good with the ball as well. She's very good with the ball, and obviously she's a good defender. Uh, so she's got some different attributes. She's not just one thing or another. She's got some different attributes that I think are, are appealing. She can play on the right side. She can play on the left side. She can even play in, in midfield if you need her to. Um, so she's, she's versatile. Uh, and, and comfortable on either side, but she's got a pretty wide range of skills uh, that I think will, will really translate well to the college game. Well, Lauren coming from a Lafayette family, but also an athletic family as well. Her cousin, Zach Gallon, just finished his rookie season in MLB with both the Arizona Diamondbacks and Miami Marlins. 
Now going from the Keystone State to the Garden State, if you take 70 out to Route 31 in New Jersey, you can head down to 100 in Central where Lindsay Dewar having a great season right now, 100 in Central, just coming off an upset of number one Eastern there in the New Jersey Group 4 State Championship game upcoming this weekend. She provides the success and goal this season for 100 in Central. What can she do to help provide success for this team, which last season, the combination, obviously, of Maggie Pohl and Natalie Newman did a great job in goal. Yeah, she's also this summer won a national championship with PDA, so she obviously knows how to help teams win games. And of course, we, you know, uh, as athletes, when we're playing, the scoreboard is a factor. So uh, I think she, again, brings uh, so many terrific skills. Um, she's a good shot stopper. Uh, she's really good with her hands, but she's also a tremendous kicker of a ball. She's very good with her feet, which you know, is now part of modern day goalkeeping, uh, the good ones anyway. Uh, so she's one that uh, I think is going to be a heck of a heck of a Patriot League player. And, and up till now, a track record is just helping teams win. And, and that's not a bad thing uh, to have next to your name. I, I also think she's she's really mature and a good, good leader uh, and hungry to do well. And, you know, in, inside any locker room, those kind of players you always value. Coach, you've mentioned perhaps the toughest position at the Division One level to adjust to is that keeper, but you've had two players on the roster be starters for at least half of the game, both in Natalie and Maggie. So what is really the key to make sure that that transition mentally, the pre preparation to help lead the team is going to be here for Lindsay, where she might be able to factor into this goalkeeping uh, competition? Well, I think there's a, a lot of it you can't teach, obviously. Uh, there's there's uh, the, the player themselves deserve most of the credit. You know, what we can do is obviously provide them an environment that they're comfortable in, uh, that uh, they're not fearful of, that is supportive for them. But the player deserves a, a large amount of credit. Both Maggie and, and Natalie are both very mature uh, and obviously uh, can handle uh, the environment, you know, in, in big spots. Both of them have been in big spots, but, and Lindsay's showed also, she's very good in big spots as well. And, and they're the ones that, that deserve the credit. We've just got to make sure we're supportive and, and that the environment they're in, they feel good about. Now we move up north to our friends from Canada for the fourth and final recruit to talk about Shannon Fee. From Ontario, it's the second consecutive year you have a recruit from Ontario coming in. She had her club ball with Ottawa South United and competed in the OPDL. What does she bring to the table to the midfield and what might she have that we have yet to see from the other recruits? Well, I think any time you go to another country uh, to recruit players, what you're obviously looking for is perhaps something that isn't readily available to you right here. Uh, so she provides a little bit of a different style of play, uh, just like Melissa does. Uh, she's highly technical. Uh, she's very clever. Uh, she thinks the game very well. Uh, and I, I just think is just off of, offers us something a little bit different uh, than the current plays we've got simply because of the environment she's grown up in, who she's been coached by, who she's played with and against, quite obviously is different than a US player. It's not vastly different, but it is different. Uh, similar to, you know, Sandra and, and players we've, uh, we've had previously internationally, Katie Brannigan and, and Reba, uh, they just play and think a little bit differently. And that's, that's the whole idea. And I think Shannon uh, has some really good uh, experiences with the provincial uh, setup as well in Ontario. So uh, she's got a lot of great experiences coming in uh, that will give us something a little bit different, I think. I'll close off this question and not just apply it to Shannon, but all the recruits. How does the campus here and the academics help these student athletes to come in and already be ready to compete? Because a case here where 
you have to be right on the top of things academically, but also a beautiful campus as well. I think it kind of just gets that spirit going to compete both in the classroom and on the pitch. So how is that going to help these four come in and immediately have success? Well, it's what they wanted. Uh, I've often said to many recruits is the, the one common thread, I think, with all of our players is this is the environment they wanted. And it's not for everyone, and that's okay. Uh, but I think with these four, it's what they wanted. They wanted world-class academics, uh, and that's obviously what Lafayette provides. Uh, they wanted Division One soccer and competitive soccer, and that's what they're getting. But also the, the campus community itself, I think, once they got here and did their visits and think both unofficial and official, uh, I think they felt right at home. So I, I think sometimes that is, um, un, with the school being so good academically, I think sometimes what, what's get lost is how great it is for the students to wake up every day on this campus with the kind of people that are here, the beauty of it, and just the environment is just, it's just a terrific place also that they feel good about uh, simply just by, by being here. So uh, it's, it's something that they wanted and that's why they'll do well because um, everything they, w they wanted we can provide. Thank you for your time, Coach. We Thanks, truly Adam. appreciate it. Again, Head Coach Mick Statham as the class of 2024 set to come and join Lafayette Women's Soccer. For the Lafayette Sports Network, I'm Adam Dobrovolsky.